Anime fans have a reputation for being unhinged. These are the kind of people who buy body pillows, wear cattails in public, and spend hundreds of dollars on 3D plastic figures of their favorite 2D animated women. Still, the majority of weebs in otaku are harmless, for the most part. Sure, they might occasionally send death threats to Hidaaki Anno, but this rarely leads to murder, dismemberment, or an act of terrorism. If you draw teenage boys with spiky hair for a living, your chances of dying violently are remarkably slim. Well, except in the case of Yoko Yoshida, a doujinshi artist in the 1990s who was mysteriously murdered in Tokyo over 20 years ago. Yoko, while not a famous artist, did well enough to live off her writing and had a number of fans. She started making and selling manga in high school, and after graduating, moved out of her parents' house to start a professional career. Yoko wrote under the pen name Kuru Sugisaki. Unfortunately, I couldn't find what exactly she wrote. Supposedly, she did some yaoi or erotic stuff, but looking through Yahoo auctions, all I could find was this hopefully non-sexual woman comic she must have made when she was 18 or so. Anyway, to get to the case, on September 29th, 2000, a census taker who had been repeatedly trying to reach Yoko at her Tokyo apartment noticed a strange smell from her room. He notified the manager and it was discovered that Yoko's front door was unlocked. They stumbled on a strange scene. Inside her apartment, Yoko was found lying dead in her bed. Nothing was missing from the room, but it was clear that foul play was involved. Yoko's neck was bruised. She was dressed only in a t-shirt, and the lower half of her body was naked. The authorities believed that Yoko had been strangled, apparently 10 days before, on September 19th. The police were stumped. They had no witnesses or clues to lead on. Interviewing Yoko's friends and associates in the comic business led them nowhere. Because her wallet was left intact, and there was over 3 million yen left in her room untouched, the authorities believed that the killer was an acquaintance. Naturally, there were rumors that the murderer was an obsessive fan, although this has never been proven. At the time, some magazines reported that Yoko's life had a dark side. She was allegedly involved with the Sex Club, the not-so-subtle name of a secretive sex club said to be made up of celebrities in Shibuya. I can't find any confirmation of this, but it certainly played into the more sensational reports at the time that Yoko was involved with some dirty gaijin or stalker fan. Yoko's case stalled for years before it was featured on the TV program The Power of Miracle Door TV in 2004, which, well, didn't really help the case go anywhere. For one thing, the show interviewed Yoko's manager, who claimed to have a letter from her. In the letter, Yoko said that she was worried about being killed by fans who lived around her. She said that she got disturbing fan letters every day and that the culprit was in Japanese. When experts compared the letter's handwriting, however, it didn't match with Yoko's. In fact, it was similar to Yoko's manager's. He confessed to forging the letter and might not even have actually been her manager. The show also interviewed Chris Robinson. Robinson is an English psychic who's been known as a dream detective. He insists that he's helped police solve crimes through seeing the culprits in his dreams. When he was consulted here, Robinson, quote, dreamed, end quote, up the appearance of Yoko's murderer, a Southeast Asian man between the ages of 25 and 35, a medium height. Robinson said that this handsome criminal fled on a train, broke his leg, and went to a hospital for treatment. So I'm not even going to get into how dumb the concept of a dream detective is. I could tell you that I had a dream last night, for example, and that Yoko Yoshida's killer was Belle Delphine. Robinson had no evidence for his claims, and it's stupid that the TV show even consulted him. Now, Robinson's vague predictions did match up with a person of interest, a man nicknamed Mr. X. Mr. X knew Yoko, lived in the area, and went missing from work around the time of Yoko's murder due to an injury. He'd given Yoko some precious medals, and after having a falling out, threatened to kill her over the phone. As promising as this is, Mr. X reportedly disappeared in January 2001. If this suspect did kill over financial reasons, however, why did he leave Yoko's money behind? And why was she left half-naked? There hasn't really been any updates since then. In 2015, on the anonymous journal site Misi, a fortune teller claiming to have been Yoko's friend made a post about her death. Using their psychic powers, this person found that the killer was a younger man and that Yoko was murdered over money problems. Another acquaintance questioned by the police, a Mr. O, was believed to be the real killer, but his co-workers confirmed his alibi. It's now been 20 years and still nobody has been able to solve Yoko Yoshida's death. Was it a deranged fan? A friend who lent her money? Somebody from the supposed sex club? Sadly, the world may never know, and definitely the psychics don't know either.